Okay, so um, I'm going to talk to you about a customer um, project that we ran recently, but I'm going to start first of all with a short story. So, it's, uh, it's late at night and a policeman is walking along a quiet street next to the park, just patrolling, uh, and up ahead he notices there's a street lamp. And underneath the street lamp, as he gets closer, he can see that there's a man bathed in the light, He's on his hands and knees on the floor, and he's sort of scrabbling around on the floor looking for something. The policeman approaches and he says, Good evening, sir. Is there anything I can help you with at all? Well, yes, says the man frantically. I've lost my keys and I can't find them. So feeling um, a sense of duty, the policeman decides to help the man look for his keys. But after several minutes, when there's still no sign of the keys whatsoever, he asks, are you sure you lost them here, sir? Well, no, says the man. I uh, dropped them somewhere in the park. Well, then why are we looking for them here? Well, because uh, the light's much better here, said the man, pointing at the street lamp. Now, that street lamp is your intranet search. There's a huge area out there containing all your business knowledge, but your intranet only searches a small part of it. And actually, your intranet search is probably, let's be honest, a bit less like a street lamp and more like a candle. And unlike, um, well, actually like the man in the story, your users don't really understand that they're searching in this small area. They kind of expect to be able to find everything. And when they can't find it, they get frustrated. And one of those uh, dark areas is email. There are all sorts of uh, information lives there. Uh, but you only get visibility of it, of course, if you're in copy on the email. So there are new tools emerging, and we've heard a lot about them today, actually. Um, but they sort of suffer with a similar problem, really. And one of those new tools is, um, is Microsoft Teams. So I won't go into too much detail about what Teams is, but, but basically it's an Office 365 app, if you don't know. Um, you can be a member of several groups or teams, um, and in each group you have members of that group, and you have a conversation feed or, sh or thread that's shared. You can also share documents there that everyone has access to, uh, and even you can share other elements that you add in yourself, like. Uh, notes or plans, that sort of thing. So you know, it's actually, don't get me wrong, it's a great app. Um, personally, I love Teams and we, and we use it every day in our company, uh, but it does have limitations. Um, but those limitations can be overcome via clever integration with a wisdom intranet. So, um, to explain how that can happen, I'm going to talk to you about this customer project story. So our customer is basically um, an agency who help companies to innovate. And um, they basically they work with a lot of large companies, and on each of those, with each of those companies, they typically at any one time will have many projects being run for those companies. Um, and on all, all of those projects, they have several team members working together and so on. And actually, um, you can imagine that if people are working away in those silos, they're probably reinventing the wheel all over the place, which is, of course, a problem. Now, recently, they moved to um, Office 365 and adopted quickly Microsoft Teams as their collaboration platform of choice that they're using for these projects. And, you know, it's great. People get access to all the information they need. They can access files and conversations from anywhere, any device, and all that kind of stuff. But um, unfortunately, they are creating, uh, in these teams, they're creating knowledge, uh, information that um, could be reused or repurposed by other people in the company on working on similar projects. You know, these can be things like um, they're doing research, or carrying out research, they've got reports, or they've got uh, templates that they've created, or they even designed whole schemes of work. And the people who need access to that information just don't get to see it. You know, basically, they'd have to be a member of every single team to be able to see that information. And that would be pretty much you know, too, it would be overwhelming 
imagine having to sort through all the notifications you'd get in Teams if you were a member of all of them. So what they really need is a, um, a sort of, the, the intranet really needs to help with this. They need a helicopter view that gives them a broad overview and be able to dive into particular areas to get the information they need. Um, and that's where the intranet came in and that's where um, we, we used wisdom. And, um, sorry, uh, so they have a wisdom intranet and, and as Dan talked about, there's a whole host of features that they're making use of in their intranet. But we did an extra thing for them, which was to create a, um, an integration with Microsoft Teams for Wisdom that allowed them to do, um, well, it did four main things, basically. So this is the first thing. Uh, on the home page of the internet, uh, it knows who you are when you arrive, and it presents you with a list of the projects that you're um, a, a member of. Uh, and if you click on any of those, you go straight through into your team. But also, on the intranet, there's a list of clients or customers that the, the company is working with. If you click into any of those, it goes through to a, a client page where you can see information about that client, including the active projects, which again, if I'm a member of, I can click and it goes into the team in Microsoft Teams. Um, and even if I'm not a member, I can click them and it prompts me and it says, you know, do you want to request access to the team? So it's sort of helping manage visibility and access to these teams that exist. But also, um, if I have the right permissions, I actually can see um, a little, is there a laser here? Yeah. There's a little button next to the live team or projects or teams, that decommission button. If I have permission, I can click that and it will actually, let's say the project's finished, that's why I might click it. Um, and it will actually take me to this form, which allows me to fill in lots of information about that project, capture it, and then when I hit OK here, it's going to do a few things. So first of all, it's going to make sure all the files are stored in SharePoint and appropriately tagged with all that information I've added. Um, also, it's going to delete the team from Microsoft Teams. Then it will actually move the project from the live projects on the client's page down to the, uh, the archive projects here. And now, if I click on the project that's listed there, it will take me to a different place. Not the team anymore, because of course that's gone. It will take me to a project page on the intranet where all the information that was captured when that team was decommissioned is now available to me or anyone in the business. Um, and so, but not only do we have all this information here that I can get to by going to a customer and then a project and seeing the information, but also uh, we've provided some search tools that actually allow people to search for information, those you know, reusable assets and things that can be repurposed across all of the archive projects. And one example is this biz dev search. So this is for um, business development people. You know, obviously they're constantly creating proposals and writing pitches and so on. And they um, can use this tool to find those assets, those bits of research, those templates and so on, that they can reuse and repurpose um, on, you know, to, to help win new business. Um, and that saves them a, a hell of a lot of time and also makes their pitches just more compelling and more well informed as well. So how, well, what makes all this possible? So wisdom, as Dan mentioned, comes with over 50, actually, I think it is, um, uh, out of the box features and, or apps. Um, and that gives you a lot of, you know, of capability straight away and allows you, as Dan said, to deliver an intranet very quickly. Um, but also, importantly, uh, wisdom allows you to create custom modules. Um, and this is, this is obviously the thing that made it possible for us to create this Teams integration in such a bespoke and meaningful way for that, that customer. Um, so what you have then with Wisdom is the ability to meet sort of, you know, 90, 95% of business requirements with these out of the box 50 features ready to go. But that remaining five to 10%, you can create custom modules to specifically address those requirements as well. And it's all open, so if, if you've got an internal development team, you can do that yourselves. You don't have to go to us or Wisdom. And of course, if you need help with it, we're always willing to help, of course. Um, so yeah, that's how we made it possible that we could search in a more broad area than traditionally on an internet. 
uh, basically shining light on that knowledge that had been left in the dark. And I encourage you all to think about how you can do something similar on your intranet.